It's Christmas slash Hanukkah slash Kwanzaa slash a bunch of other things. Where were you when Santa fell? Ting, ting, ting. That song is the single best thing to come out of Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year. That time of year where people give and receive a bunch of crap they don't really need and it probably ends up in a drawer and gets regifted to somebody else anyway. I spent the last nine Christmases working retail, so I'm a little bit salty still, a little bit grinchy, but that's fine. But seriously though, I do actually like Christmas. Eating a bunch of junk food, spending time with family and friends, gingerbread houses, getting a little bit trashed but out of a champagne glass so it's classy, great times. All that stuff's great. But if you're kind of over the whole gift giving thing, if you're sick of spending your hard earned cash buying gifts for little snot nosed brats who won't appreciate it anyway, or if you're just trying to reduce the amount of clutter, physical possessions that you bring into your life, or maybe you just think that the amount of gift giving has gotten a little out of hand. And listen up, shut up bird. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the wisdom of my mouth words. I'm on the internet, I know what I'm talking about. You may not like some of what I'm about to say, because you might have to get a little bit... vulnerable. Gross. But as the minimalists say, when your actions don't align with your values, discontentment is born. That may not be a direct quote, but close enough. If you're finding yourself discontent in the gift giving department, there are two paths you can take. Firstly, continue to do nothing. I don't like conflict, so I have a history of just avoiding conversations until I just give up internally or they get really out of hand. So you can do this, but how's that worked out for you so far? Option number two is to discuss how you feel with your friends and loved ones. I know, awkward. But you know what? It's probably fulfilling in the long run. Probably. If you do decide to have the discussion, it doesn't have to be this big dramatic thing, all or nothing, like guys, no more gifts ever. Christmas is canceled, I have decreed it. There are a few different paths you can take. Here's my advice. You could A, cut out gifts entirely, but particularly as a first step, this may not go down well with some people. Human beings are very set in their ways they like their traditions, and depending on who you speak to, they might get quite defensive, offensive, offended. On that note, some people's love language is literally gift giving. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're like, Alex, what the hell is a love language? Are you crazy? Give it a Google. Essentially, it's how people show and receive love, how like they put it into a, a thing. There's even a test you can take to tell you what love language you have. There are five different ones and I got 0% nothing in gift giving. So for me, obviously not a big deal, but for somebody who shows and receives their love primarily through gift giving, if you tell them I'm not into giving gifts, I don't want to do it anymore, it can be a hard pill to swallow. I would at least suggest cutting out gift giving for all those people who you really don't need to be buying gifts for. You know who these people are, don't pretend you don't, you know in your heart. I'm talking about that neighbor you never speak to, your second cousin's stepmom, all that nonsense. Don't worry about that unless like you really fucking love your second cousin's stepmom. Whatever. Do it, no, don't do it. Next point. If you stop giving presents to someone entirely, it really shouldn't be a big deal because realistically, they're probably gonna be getting presents from other people. So they, in my head, it's not a huge deal, but maybe for a love language gift giving person it is. I've got a good group of friends from high school and traditionally we have always given each other gifts since, well, high school. But this year was the first year that I decided to opt out of the gift exchange and it worked out pretty great. I acknowledge cutting out gifts entirely, even just with one group of people, may be a bit extreme for some. So option B, why don't you just cut back on the amount or cost of gifts? For example, you could suggest a Kris Kringle with your group of friends or family. That group of high school friends I just mentioned, way back when, back in the day, we used to spend about $25, $30 on each member of the group. As in, we'd each end up with like five gifts. It was complicated, it was stressful, it was unnecessary. So eventually we decided, why don't we just do a Kris Kringle situation that will spend $100 to $120 on each person. And that way everyone gets something that they really like, something more high quality that they'll probably keep, 
instead of having five cheapish gifts that they probably don't need to keep. Even if there's certain people that you need to buy a gift for individually, let's say like you really wanna buy a present for each of your siblings or your partner, maybe just start doing one gift. You don't need to get your partner like 10 different gifts for Christmas, calm down. Option C, get more practical. This can be used in conjunction with option B as well. Now I understand that a lot of people like the surprise of gift giving. It's a big factor in the whole idea around giving gifts. But you can always just ask someone, what do you want? What do you need? That way they're getting something that they will actually like and slash or use, as opposed to something that may just end up in a drawer for 10 years until it eventually gets thrown out or get re-gifted to somebody else on an endless re-gifting cycle. Candles. You know what's fucking dumb? Buying someone a gift just for the sake of buying them a gift or because you feel obligated to do it. Like, oh shit, I still need to get something for Mark. What the hell am I gonna get him? What's he into? I don't know. I'll just get him a candle. Mark doesn't want a candle. Now it's different if you go out and you see a candle and you're like, oh, lime and mint. Mark would fucking love this. I'm gonna get him this candle. That's an entirely different situation. But will Mark fucking love that or will it sit in a drawer? Option D. Give them an experience or time together instead of something physical. Take them skydiving. Pay for lunch in a nice cafe. Uh, teach them a language. I don't know, anything. Do I need to say more on this? Probably not. So, now that you know which strategy or strategies you want to employ, how are you gonna do it? How are you going to bring it up and have that awkward conversation? That's right. We're gonna talk about being open and vulnerable with your feelings. Yay! Some people will not understand what the big deal is here. They will not get the anxiety behind having one of these conversations. But these can be dangerous waters to put one's toe into. You don't want to offend someone by unintentionally implying that their money, time and effort aren't appreciated. You know it's not about that, but they may not, especially if their love language is gift giving. I'm showing you love. Why are you not taking my love? Do you not love me? I've been doing this minimalist thing for many moons now, and I still feel awkward about having this conversation. I don't like being vulnerable, but you gotta do it. You gotta be true to your feelings, you know? And people can't read your mind. Earlier when I mentioned that this is the first year that I haven't done gifts with my high school friends, that came about because I was just constantly dropping not so subtle hints. The first time I brought it up, nobody was really receptive to it, so I kept just kind of sprinkling it into conversation, like a, like a firm jab, <laughs> subtle. But I still felt like we weren't quite on the same page, probably because I just kept dropping hints and avoided having the actual conversation with them like an adult. So a couple of weeks ago, I finally had the conversation and it's because one of my friends made a comment about, I just don't get why you wouldn't be involved in a 20 to $30 Kris Kringle just for the sake of doing something fun with your friends. Which is a fair point, I get where she's coming from, but it's not about that for me. So I kind of had to have this conversation where I said, I think we're coming from two different angles here. I get what you're saying and I don't want you to feel like I don't prioritize the friendship group and it's not worth 20 to $30 for me, but I am actively reducing the amount of physical things I have in my life and I really don't want to bring anything new into my life that I don't absolutely love or doesn't serve a practical function. That's not the direction I'm heading toward and it's not my goal for the future. So for me, it's not about the 20 to $30 and it's not about not appreciating the effort and time and money someone would put into a gift for me. It just feels wasteful to me when there's not that many material things that I need or want. We'd spoken about love languages as a group before. We'd done the tests together. And this is when I brought up the love language thing. And I said, I understand if your love language is gift giving, but please remember that my love language is everything but gift giving. And they were really good with it. And I'm glad that I had that chat with them because I want them to know like my reasoning behind it. Like it's not just a case of thinking that the presents they get me are crap, it's something more than that. It's really helpful when people are already on the same page or wavelength as you are. So for example, I didn't even have to have this conversation with my parents this year because maybe my mum was mind reading me or something. She just said to me, what do you think about just doing one gift each this year? And I was like, fuck yeah, that is perfect. After about half a year of trying to decide whether I should spend money on getting some good quality shoes, 
to replace these ones that my friend gave me for free and are about a size and a half too big and are starting to fall apart. And I have used every single day for everything. I decided to buy some Timberlands during the Black Friday sales. And my dad said to me, hey, do you want us to just buy those for Christmas? And I was like, oh yeah, great idea. So now I'm getting them for Christmas. Practical. My parents asked my sister-in-law what she'd like for Christmas and she said a laptop stand because she's been doing so much work from home lately. So we got her a laptop stand. And my siblings and siblings-in-law and I have decided to go down the not physical gift route. So we're gonna do an experience together like laser tag or bowling or something. That's it. That's all my gift giving wisdom I can think of at the moment. You're now ready to tell your friends and family that you don't appreciate them and their efforts, but inoffensively. I'm joking. If there are any other topics that you'd like me to throw my opinion of onto the internet, let me know down below. Click that subscribe. See you next time. Goodbye.